हाय स्टूडेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द चैनल लर्न एंड टीच बाय सरयाज मैं हूं आपका टीचर और होस्ट सैयद अयाजुद्दीन हैदर और इस वीडियो लेसन में हम सॉल्व करेंगे पेपर ट्वेल्व फॉर मे जून टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री पेपर ट्वेल्व जो है मल्टीपल चॉइस है और टोटल मार्क्स इस पेपर के हैं फोर्टी ये एक घंटे का पेपर है देर आर फोर्टी क्वेश्चन इन दिस पेपर वी हैव यू हैव टू आंसर ऑल दी क्वेश्चन देर विल बी फोर पॉसिबल आंसर फॉर ईच क्वेश्चन ए बी सी एंड डी यू हैव टू चूज वन ऑफ द आंसर विच शुड बी द करेक्ट वन यू आर अलाउड टू यूज कैलकुलेटर प्रियोडिट टेबल विल बी प्रोवाइडेड इन दिस पेपर सो लेट स्टार्ट द पेपर क्वेश्चन नंबर वन सैंपल ऑफ आयोडीन इज एट रूम टेम्परेचर एंड प्रेशर विच स्टेटमेंट अबाउट द पार्टिकल्स इन द सैंपल इज करेक्ट यू नो दैट सैंपल ऑफ आयोडीन वैन दिस एट रूम टेम्परेचर इट मस्ट बी इन द सॉलिड स्टेट नाउ दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द पार्टिकल्स आई एम रीडिंग ऑल द स्टेटमेंट चॉइस ए द पार्टिकल्स है अरेंज इन अ जॉइंट लेटेस्ट इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज यू नो दैट आयोडीन इज अ नॉन मेटल Uh, in non metals most of the non metals have simple molecular structure they are they don't have giant lattice there's only uh, exception for the allotropes of carbon now it's in the solid state so particles can't be arranged in giant lattice choice b the particles have zero kinetic energy this is also incorrect you know that the particle does not have any zero kinetic energy they must have some energy even in the solid state the particle just vibrate about their fixed position so you can't say that the particles have zero kinetic energy part c the particles move randomly through the solid this is also incorrect because the particles don't have enough energy to move randomly through the solid non choice d the particles vibrate about a fixed position this is the correct statement they are vibrating about their fixed position question number 2 Element Z, nucleon number thirty-one forms an ion Z three minus. Where is Z found in the periodic table? Here is a periodic table. The nucleon number is given. If you look at the nucleon number of the element, you'll find it. It must be phosphorus, and it's in the group five. So group five, they form ions with the minus three charge. So here we have Z minus three charge. Because they need three electrons to complete their valence shell. So in this question, choice B will be the correct answer. Obviously, other choices are incorrect. Question number three. Naturally occurring bromine has a relative atomic mass of eighty and consists entirely of two isotopes. Our relative atomic mass is seventy nine and thirty one. what can be deduced about naturally occurring bromine from this information only a bromine contains the two isotopes in equal proportions now if you look at the relative atomic masses of these two isotopes they are 79 and 81 so if you add up these then you have to divide it by 2 you will get 80 which means this choice is correct because it's saying that they are in present in equal proportion both of these must be in equal proportion that's why we are getting 80 as relative atomic mass of bromine so choice a will be the correct one for your convenience i am reading the other statements b bromine has different oxidation states now this information does not help you in predicting the different oxidation states of the bromine so this is obviously wrong choice c bromine isotopes have different numbers of protons you know the what is the definition of isotopes the definition of isotopes is different atoms of the same element with same number of protons but different number of neutrons so this is also incorrect d bromine is radioactive this is also incorrect because the information does not suggest that bromine is releasing any energy so we are left with only choice a which will be the correct answer for this one question number 4 element x and element y react together to form a compound 
Now we have two elements, X and Y, they're reacting to form a compound. The electronic configuration of X and Y are X is equal to 2, comma, 8, comma, 3, and Y is equal to 2, comma, 6, which row shows the electron transfer that takes place and the type of compound form. Now, if you look at these two compounds, uh, sorry, these two elements, you can see for X, the valence electron is 3, which means it must be in the third group of the priority way and y having six which means in the group six of the product table so here's the product table so we have two elements one from group three and one from group six they both are reacting so you know that group three they are metals group six they are non-metals so the bond and compound must be ionic it must be ionic between these two. And you all know that metals lose electrons, non-metals gain electron. So obviously, either choice B is correct or D is correct. And A and C are incorrect. Now I'm reading the statements for choice B. So for element X, each atom, there are two atoms of X, each will lose three electrons what about y it will receive electrons and there must be three atoms which will receive two electrons now if you predict the formula between these two we will know that whether we are getting two atoms of x and three atoms of y or not so the valency for x will be plus three it's in group three y it must be minus two it's in group six ignoring the charges now these subscripts will be exchanged and we will get x to y3 which means this will be the right answer. For your convenience I am reading the last statement also. Two atoms each receive three electrons. This is wrong because x is a matter it will lose electrons not gain electrons. So this is incorrect also. Moving to question number five. Which molecule has the largest number of electrons involved in covalent bond? So I'm drawing the displayed formula for these two. And remember, each dash line represents two electrons. So this one is ethene. This is ethene. Displayed formula for ethene will be this so there are one two three four five six six means six multiplied by two twelve electrons for this one i am writing just number here these are electrons involved in the bonding what about co2 display formula for co2 will be c double bond o double bond o one two three four four multiplied by two means eight electrons for carbon dioxide. What about methanol? CH3OH is methanol. This will be the displayed formula for methanol. Count the number of bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 multiplied by 2 is 10. So these are the number of electrons involved in covalent bond in methanol. What about D? N2. This is the displayed formula for N2 and triple bond n. One, two, three. Three multiplied by two is six. So obviously choice A will be the right answer for question number five. Number six, X is the arrangement of bonds around a carbon atom in graphite. Y is the arrangement of bonds around a carbon atom in diamond. Z is the arrangement of bonds around a silicon atom in silicon four oxide SiO2. Which arrangements of bonds are the same so you know that diamond and si2 having same arrangement of bonds both have tetrahedral structure
so y and z c must be the right answer for this question the other choices are incorrect number 7 what is the equation for the reaction between sodium carbonate and dilute nitric acid so first of all you must know the formula of these two compounds that is sodium carbonate and dilute nitric acid sodium carbonate is na2 co3 and nitric acid is hno3 so obviously choice a b are incorrect we are left with c and d either c is correct or d is correct c is wrong because again you are having h2no3 so only choice d will be the right answer in this case na2co3 plus 2hno3 gives 2nano3 plus h2o plus co2 number 8 which statements about relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass are correct number 1 the mass of different isotopes does not affect relative atomic mass this is incorrect statement because it will definitely affect the relative atomic mass two only covalent compounds have relative molecular mass this is correct because covalent compounds have relative molecular masses ionic compounds they have a relative formula mass compounds have relative formula mass number 3 relative atomic masses are compared to 1 by 12 of the mass of one atom of carbon 12 this is also correct because relative atomic masses are compared to 1 by 12 of the mass of one atom of c so number 2 and 3 is correct so choice c will be the right answer in this case number 9 aqueous hydrogen peroxide h2o2 decomposes slowly at 25 degrees centigrade this is a chemical reaction 2h2o2 aqueous gives 2h2o liquid plus o2 gas the decomposition reaction takes place faster when a catalyst is added a student adds a small amount of catalyst to 10 cm cube of one mole per dm cube h2o2 aqueous and collects a gas form the volumes of gas collected is 90 cm cube this must be the volume of oxygen it's 90 cm cube all measurements are at room temperature and pressure what is the percentage yield of o2 now what is the formula of percentage yield the formula for percentage yield is experimental value multiply by 100 divided by theoretical value now we have the experimental value which is 90 cm cube we need to calculate the theoretical value so i'm how i'm going to calculate the theoretical value if i know the moles of these two then i can easily calculate the theoretical value so first of all i am going to calculate the number of moles of h2o2 which will help me in calculating the moles of oxygen then i will be able to calculate the volume of the gas oxygen so we have 10 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube h2o2 which means 10 multiplied by 1 and divided by 1000 Point zero one moles of H two O two. How I got this? I got this through doing this thousand centimeter cube of H two O two contains one mole, which is according to the question. Therefore, ten centimeter cube of H two O two contains X moles. to the cross you will get 0.01 moles of h2o2 
Now we need to calculate the moles of oxygen according to the equation. We have H2O2, O2, two moles giving one moles or releasing one mole of oxygen. Gas therefore 0 0.01 moles gives x mole of oxygen. Do the cross, you will get this x equal to 0 0.01 divided by 2. 0 0.01 divided by 2. 0 0.005 moles of oxygen. So, we know that at RTP, one mole of gas contains 24,000 centimeter cube. Therefore, 0 0.005 contains X centimeter cube. So, we will multiply 0 0.005 by 24,000. We will get 120. So, theoretical value will be 120. I'm writing it here, 120 centimeter cube. So, 90 multiplied by 100 divided by 120. 90 multiplied by 100 divided by 120, 75%. So D must be the right answer for this question. Remember, you have to organize yourself so that you must have enough time to do these calculations during the exam. Number 10, the diagram shows the structures of the atoms of two elements, X and Y, X and Z. X and Z are not the atomic symbols of these elements. P is for proton, N is neutron, E is electron. The elements combine to form a compound. What is the mass of one mole of this compound? So look at their valence electrons. X contain one, which means it's in the group one. So I'm writing plus one here. What about Z? One, two, three, four, five, six. It must be in group six. The valency will be minus two. Predicting the formula. Formula Charge will be ignored, so you'll get X to Z. So, which means it must be having two atoms of X and one atom of Z. So, in order to calculate the mass, you have to calculate, uh, you have to multiply two by the nucleon number, which is three plus four, seven. So, seven multiplied by two gives 14. Z, one atom. So, we will add eight neutron plus. 8 proton, 16. So you will add 16 and 14. You will get 30. So 30 gram must be the right answer for this question. So 30 is the right answer for this question. I'm ending the class. In the next video, I will continue my paper 12. Press like. And share my videos. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.